Protecting our data online can be difficult depending on how we're used to browsing the web. We learn more about some common bad habits as well as how to break them from Matt Hashem, an expert in security and privacy at the U of A Eller College of Management. Remind our, our viewers that any time you use the internet, we're somehow products. Tell me about that. That's right. I mean, if you go to a website like Facebook or Twitter or Amazon or Google or any of these sites without picking on any of them, are they free or are you paying for it? So if they're free, they're not just giving that away because it makes them feel good, right? They're giving that away because they use and collect your data and then sell that or use that in other ways to make, make some money. So in essence, anytime we make a move on our smartphone or the computer, it's being viewed by some other entity that's using it. It's possible. Okay. So yeah, so we have to be careful. We don't want to be totally afraid and paranoid about using technology, but we need to know that there, there's not really this expectation that everything I do is between me and that particular site that I'm going to. There may be some sharing or some use of that data in other ways. So where's the balance between I want to enjoy the internet, but I also have some level of an expectation of privacy. What can we do? Think carefully about what you would um, tell people in person versus what you wouldn't tell people in person. That's kind of a good, I think, general rule of thumb. If I may not tell you uh, very personal details about, about myself, but I may tell a family member very detailed personal information. And so, you know, the stranger or the acquaintance is that person on a Facebook or a Twitter or whatever. So if I don't really feel comfortable sharing that with an uh, acquaintance, I shouldn't put it out there, right? And as far as visiting uh, sites that we want to feel safe about, um, I would say go with some of the names that you know and trust. I have a funny little example I can share with you. My son came to me the other day and said, Dad, I really want this game. Look, it's only $25 on this website. I said, okay, well, I'll look that up on Amazon because I know they're a reputable retailer. And it was about $50. I said, you know, that's probably too good to be true. And if it, you think it's probably good, too good to be true, you probably shouldn't do it. There are other things like using Wi-Fi in public or authentication measures that sometimes come up. Those are things we ought to keep an eye out oh, for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think this is a funny one that, you know, even in my own uh, classes, I, I try to make my students aware of this. Um, if I'm on public Wi-Fi, and public Wi-Fi meaning I'm at a coffee shop and they're giving free Wi-Fi, or I'm at a, a restaurant and they're giving free Wi-Fi, or the, a ball game or whatever, um, there should not be 100% confidence that someone else is not intercepting my data. So if I'm at a public Wi-Fi, I don't do banking. I don't do business on public Wi-Fi. I guess the one thing I would tell people about account security, any website, is passwords. We need to have strong passwords, but um, we need to enable what's called two-step authentication or two-factor or multi-factor, it's defined, it's labeled many different ways. But I was just looking recently on, on Google, you go into your Google account, you click on the security tab, and there's an option there to enable two-step authentication. And what that means is the first step is your password, which we're all gonna have passwords. The second step is something else, it's a, a code. It's something I have to have my phone, it's a, it's a second factor. And so the idea there is if you make it hard for the attacker to get that second factor, that second step, they're gonna move on. They're gonna go attack someone else that only has a password enabled. You never be too careful. You can't be too careful, but you also, you wanna enjoy technology. So uh, just be aware that there are threats out there and try to make the best decisions that you can. Okay, Dr. Hashim, thank you. Thank you.